So we are here in Tayusa for something really special. It's in half an hour outside of Sukua and we saw that they've got this. We're at La Casa Tibica to try Chanta Kuro. Not to be confused with Chanta Duro, the fruit, which we actually had in Limon. Chanta Kuro is actually a larva that grows in the palm trees where you will find Chanta Duro as well as coconut and other things. It's a very common protein to have here. So people will have it for breakfast. They will also have it as pinchos on a skewer and uh, you can also have it fried or in an ayam paco. This is my first time trying it. Not what I want to see while I'm eating this, but this is what it's like right here. So on this plate, we have a little bit of yuca, we have a little bit of banana, we have some tomato, onion. You try it. You try it first. I already ate it. So? So for me, it actually, it, it just tastes like something that's been put on an asado. It has that charcoal flavor. The texture of it is a little bit like uh, soft inside, almost if you had like a really soft pureed oh. sausage. What is it? Mm. The head is crunchy. Mm. But it's actually really good. It's a little bit juicy inside, not too dry. This is very easy to eat. Like a squishy hot dog bite, like a Vienna sausage. Yeah. Vienna yeah, sausage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've eaten a Vienna sausage, you could definitely eat this. And so the cool thing is, again, this ahi here in the Amazon is salt mixed with the spice. So it's great because it sticks to everything. It is interesting. If you think this is going to be weird, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, are you gonna eat that slug, that larva? Yeah, you should do that. You should do it because it's interesting. Also, this is an amazing source of protein. You know, in generations to come, we are all gonna be eating bugs, slugs, all of these things. And so I think Ecuador is gonna be ahead of the game because they found a way to make it tasty. Mm. Ooh, it's good with the spice too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend eating them while there's a bowl of them live. That's a little harder to do, but mm, I'm so glad we tried this. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be the weirdest thing I've ever eaten in Ecuador. This is not, this is not even close to being the weirdest. And then they gave us a little bit of this Wayusa drink, also known as the Red Bull of the Amazon. This existed before coffee. Remember, coffee is not from Ecuador. It's not from South America. So long before that, the original stimulant was this. This is made with a leaf that they dry here, and then they just prepare as tea. Now we did learn that you can use it fresh. You can make a fresh tea or a dried tea. Some people put sugar in it. I don't think it needs it. Yes. This is well worth coming to. What a great experience. And I can tell you, it's tasty here. I am so glad that this was our first experience. Welcome to Sukua. We are still in the Marona Santiago province. We're just half an hour outside of Macas, which is the town that really grew on me. Now driving into Sukua, things look a little bit different. You can see things are more freshly painted. There's a beautiful main square. It looks like this is going to be a great town. But to be honest, we don't really know a lot about it. We just drove in, we're gonna figure it out. And we thought, where should we start? What should we do? And then we thought, of course, we're gonna start at the best place. So we're here at the main market. All right guys, so this is tagua. So tagua is known as a vegetable ivory and Andreas had told me about this because people actually take the seed and they make things into it but it's actually really tough to carve because it's like ivory it's like one of the strongest things but it actually comes from nature you don't need to you know take elephant ivory tusks which don't exist here and it was one of the first things that we saw coming into this market and so she uh, she told us you can eat it raw and so she opened one up i think this cost us 50 cents to try so when you want to try things you know, she's selling them in bulk, but it's always good to ask if you could buy. So we are trying this. The smell 
It's a fruit, but also smells like a potato. Yeah, but there is something citric in it. Yeah, Can it's you... like a citrusy potato. You would said it one time, you thought it was yeah, naranjilla. Oh, in the beginning, I was about to say it doesn't taste like much of anything. Actually, it has like a strawberry, peachy, banana flavor to me, like almost like a yogurt, like a very mild, oh, it, right, yeah. like a fruit cocktail yogurt. So basically all you do is you cut it open and you've got to eat around the seeds. Don't even try to bite through the seed. You cannot get a knife through these seeds, so you're definitely not going to get your teeth through them. So the guy that explained what was this on Wallachisa, mm -hmm. he pretty much said that it's fantastic for everything, like from two like from two days to whatever. You have to drink it like every day. Just have to take a little piece of the inside and blend it with water. And she recommends that to make it more powerful, you put uh, some drops of uña de gato. That's another product from here, the Amazon, that also has like a lot of medicinal properties. It's like a herb uh, that grows in the mountains. I know that that is good for, it's like a good diuretic, but she said that it's like good for everything. Like, if you have some problems with your hair, that thing will help you. All right, so we came upon this fruit right here, which is called morete. You can eat it raw, but it has to be super ripe. And so this almost looks like an armadillo or like some kind of animal kind of shell, but they said if it's uh, not ripe, you actually have to put this in boiling water to loosen the skin up. So we're gonna give it a try. The thing with these fruits is that they actually change color. So there's a big pit in the middle. So you basically just scrape off the flesh. You just scrape off the flesh from it and the flavor changes. So it has this sharp, citrusy lime, but almost an orange flavor. It starts out creamy, kind of chalky, and then actually gets a little bit like naranjilla. So actually, they were really nice here. We asked them if we could just buy one, like how much they would charge for us to just buy one. One is always gonna cost you more than say if you buy a bag. So this is just really for us to try. And she said, no, that's fine, just take it. So super nice. But now I wanna know what Andreas thinks because it's a complex flavor. In the beginning, you're like, oh, it tastes like nothing. And then you're like, wait, is that naranjilla? Is it lime? Is it lemon? Is it mandarin orange? What is this? Are you curious? All right. Like orange? Mm. Something citric? Yeah. I don't know. To me, it didn't taste like anything. All right, the people in that market were so, so nice. We tried three different fruits I had never seen before. We learned a little bit more about things like Chontaduro, which I thought was mostly in, the, in Colombia and a little bit in Esmeraldas, but they said, actually, there's lots here. And there's a chicha de chanta here um, in another market where there's supposed to be a lot of traditional food. So we're gonna go check that out. at the Comedor de Ana. She was so nice to explain to us this drink that I've been wanting to try. So this is chicha de yuca. Now in the Amazon, traditionally, how they would do it is they would take the yuca, which is a very starchy, doesn't have a lot of juice. And so to extract all the juices from it, they would actually chew it. So the process of chewing it and then spitting out the juice helped ferment it because the saliva helped ferment it. It was arduous. So if you come here now, it's not made the same way. You are not eating something that someone has chewed out. So now they have a process to actually extract the yuca. They have the sugar to ferment it. They serve it in this hollowed out calabaza. Here it's called pilche. Is that in Shuar? In Shuar, which is the traditional indigenous region. And this gigantic gourd of uh, chicha is $1. First, it feels tart, a little bit sour. It also has this like toasty kind of flavor. Like you can almost have like a 
a yeasty, toasty kind of sense. If you like sour beers and things like that, or if you like fermented flavors, I think you're gonna love this. Yeah, it's very fermented. Yeah, it's very fermented. So it's like one of those um, fancy saison beer that you'll find in a uh, artisanal brewery. Not bad. It's, it's, this is actually way better than the ones that I have had before. And I had it in uh, Northern Amazon where everything is a bit more traditional, like old school. This one is quite, quite good. All right, so we moved over to the Comedor de Teresa. And so it looks like an outdoor food court um, or a patio de comidas, but everything here is very traditional. I feel like we hit the jackpot because the other thing we were looking for was chicha de chanta. And so chanta is that fruit that we saw in the market. And essentially they make it in a very similar way. So they um, ferment a chicha de yuca, similar to what we just had, but then they add the chanta fruit, the chanta juice, and then they let it sit for 24 hours and it's done. So the color of this is so vibrant, such a vibrant orange. The flavor still has that strong fermented yuca. And the taste? Mm. It's hard to describe, like almost like a boiled egg yolk flavor. And that's what this has. The Chanta Duro, the Chanta has only been here for less than 24 hours, but I think it's really overtaken what the flavor is. It's really, really good. I like it. It doesn't have that strong fermented sour flavor, but it does have like this really good, they're only a dollar, and so it's definitely worth it to come here and try it for yourself. And if you do come here, please tell me what you think this tastes like. One of the things I forgot to mention is that chicha, whether it be corn or yuca or any of these things, this is a drink that's fermented similar to beer. And so it is alcoholic and so kids cannot drink it. Um, also, you need to be careful with it because this is actually a celebration drink. Uh, you can get drunk from it. However, just to try some of it, it is a low alcohol drink. So you can have some of it and you'll be fine. It's a little bit different than what we had in Wallachiza. It's a different fish. So we had tilapia. This is the kachama, which is the river fish. And then also, instead of a banana, this is actually made with yuca because that's what's plentiful here. But the one thing that is consistent in both was this ahi. So discovering all of these different kinds of ahi is so cool. And so this is an ahi made by mixing the salt and the spice together, which is great because this is a steamed fish. And so there's not gonna be a ton of flavor other than the charcoal coming through those leaves. So you really do need a little bit of salt and ahi to kind of, well, spice things up. And based on what we saw everyone else do this, you were eating with our hands, or at least that's what we've seen other people do. And I believe they're bringing napkins over, which is great. But I don't know if I've ever eaten steam fish with my hands, but I eat everything else with my hands, so why not? All right, so it was hot, so I'm using the yuca as a little boat, a little utensil. Hmm, this is such a good fish. Clean tasting. Um, I wasn't sure what it would taste like as it's a river fish, but it doesn't have a really strong flavor. It actually has a very fresh taste. All right, so you can see this fish is cooked perfectly. So when we got here, they actually said to us we were gonna have to wait 25 minutes. But there's so much meat here. And I would say, having eaten this and eaten the tilapia, this is a much thicker fleshed fish. They give a bigger portion. This was 350. But the actual fish itself, kachama, it actually tastes much better. I much prefer it. And also, I love yuca. So I would say it is one of the things that you must eat in the Amazon, and I would recommend eating it in Sakua. This is really good. Yeah. We're at Choco Berry, which I think is a U.S. frozen yogurt company, but they've got one here too. I've never been there. They had a promotion, two cones for $1.50. The three flavors, or the two flavors were Mora, which is 
um, Blackberry, and then also Pina. This is a nice little town. A really nice uh, main square. A lot of people out walking around. Ice cream. We're going to try to find some coffee. So far, Sokoa seems like a really nice time. Like just to hang out. You can have modern food. You can have traditional food. screen this ends my video of Sakua Ecuador it has been an amazing day here see you next time mm -hmm.